on Overdrive today, we get behind the wheel of the Range Rover Sport, sample a TVS race motorcycle and tell you all about the Zantes 350R. Hello and welcome to Overdrive, I am Sony Dutt. Like the larger Range Rover, the Range Rover Sport now is fully redesigned and comes with cutting edge technology. It also gets a mild hybrid 3-litre petrol and diesel variant. Let's find out how it feels like to drive on Indian roads. <laughs> Now the Range Rover in its newest generation has become larger, pricier and more opulent. Which means that the Range Rover Sport now also in its newest third generation really gets the chance to become that driver focused, that more manageable and more approachable version of the Range Rover experience. So today we have that car here with us to see if that really holds true. Now once you start driving you realize that again it's still completely a Range Rover just with the view out that you get. You sit not quite as high and not quite as, you know, throne-like a position as in the regular Range Rover. It's a bit more compact, a bit more cocooned, but still quite high up. You have that long bonnet flowing out in front of you. You can see the edges more or less. This low sill, again, these armrests. So yeah, it's an out and out Range Rover. The Range Rover Sport can be had with two 3.0-litre inline-six mild hybrid engine options. The D350 diesel is more widely available with its 350 PS and 700Nm, although the version you see here is the P400 petrol with its slightly more enthusiastic bent, putting out 400 PS and 550Nm. The ZF 8-speed pairs with both and you get air suspension, adaptive dampers and a locking central differential. Of course, it's a Range Rover, so there's 4x4 and the Terrain Response 2 system, although we couldn't really test it out on this occasion. Now as for the way this P400 6-cylinder performs, with 400 PS of course performance is not lacking, but given the sheer mass of the Range Rover Sport, this SUV is quick if not outrightly fast. So moving along in traffic is really not an issue at all. And the ZF, unlike in some say German SUVs, here it's tuned a bit more softly, but again, it's not at the cost of, you know, how attentive it is. So it's always giving you that shift whenever you need it. It's just that it's doing it a touch softly. With the 35% stiffer MLA Flex architecture, the new Range Rover Sport is already quite a bit ahead of the SUV it replaces in terms of dynamic ability. This can be enhanced further with the Stormer handling pack which adds rear wheel steer, torque vectoring and anti-roll functions. There's also quite an eventful launch control function. It's easy to engage and will have the sport straining against the brakes and squatting the rear springs before shooting off. Although we couldn't quite get near the 5.7 second 0-100 claim time, again possibly due to these all-season tyres. Now these massive 22 inch wheels look great but going a size or two smaller should be best for our conditions. The Range Rover Sport can chop and thud over our uneven city roads but it must be said that the impacts are quite well damped for such a large sized wheel. Either way this fades away quickly as speeds rise and with the significant suspension travel from the air springs you don't really need to tiptoe over rough patches too. Now quite a significant change is how much of a better handler the Range Rover Sport has become. So yeah, it can't obviously hide its massive mass and the fact that it's a big tall SUV. But within those parameters, within what you expect of a Range Rover, things have moved on quite a bit. So for example, on this tight bit of road, you can still find the rhythm like the way we are moving along. It'll flow along briskly, it'll change direction without, you know, too much drama. Of course, these all-season tyres hamper it a bit but if you drive normally like any other person, these shouldn't be a problem. So what you get is a big SUV that feels confident on the move, that feels, you know, engaging almost. And yeah, that's largely because the air suspension, it's doing a really good job. It's tightened things up from how it is in comfort, so it isn't rolling around as much. And what you get is that control, but without too much of an effect on ride quality. So the ride quality remains more or less the same but you have this nice sense of control, the steering weighs up a bit, it's already quite well weighted throughout all the modes. So yeah, the Range Rover Sport, you can hustle it along if you really feel like it, if you really want to.
Now you expect a Range Rover to be inviting and the Sport does not disappoint to that end. And it starts right from the beginning with the soft closed doors, with those flush door handles. And then when you're seated inside, you realize that the seats bring themselves up to the position that you left them in. Same for the steering wheel. And it goes further than that. The massaging function will come back on if you want it to. Same for the seat heating or cooling, which is a rare occurrence, but really sort of gives you that sense of luxury. Yes, some of the features, for example, the auto hold and the start stop are buried deep in submenu. Same for these vent controls. But that's not really a bother because you realize that those functions, you use them maybe once or twice when you've just started using the car and then you just leave them as they are. The Range Rover Sport also makes an immediate impression with the way it looks. So you have these slim elements, barely a crease and a taut, almost sci-fi look to this large SUV. With prices starting from Rs 1.64 crore, the Range Rover Sport costs quite a bit less than the full-size Rangey. In that sense, it comes quite close to offering a good glimpse of the Range Rover experience at a more approachable price point. It's not the best handling SUV at this price, but it has that same sense of luxury and gravitas that you expect from a Range Rover. Pair that with decent dynamics, competent performance and about as much tech as you would need. The third generation Range Rover Sport is now based on a platform that can run completely on electricity and we can expect a fully electric Range Rover Sport in India by 2024. We'll take a very quick break. But Welcome back, you're watching Overdrive. Now recently we were the chosen few to be invited to ride the TVS Apache RR 310 race motorcycle that is used in the Asian Road Racing Championship that is TVS's one make racing series. Now Rohit tells you what is different in this motorcycle from the ones that is sold in India and the ones that we have come to love. We are back at a racetrack and we've been riding an RR310 again. I know what you're thinking, but no, this time it's different. So why am I grinning? That's because we are at a MotoGP certified track and we've been riding a race bike. So who wouldn't? And not just any race bike. One that until a day prior to shooting the story was racing neck to neck against other similar motorcycles in the TVS Apache RR310 One Make series at the Asian Road Racing Championship. And you see, it is a big deal because by participating at the ARRC, TVS Racing is actually creating a channel, a pathway for Indian racers to graduate to, to a global scale and get better exposure. And that global exposure is very important. To that effect, three celebrated racers from India, Deepak Ravi Kumar, H.Y. Ahmed and Jagan were a part of the 20-rider roster that comprised racers from other Asian countries and the sheer fact that our Indian boys were outpaced by most of them shows how fierce the global competition benchmark is and it will only make our champions aim for better performance, especially when the motorcycle spec and tune is the same for all the racers, providing a level playing field. This race bike is derived from the road legal Apache RR310. So apart from the bore and stroke of the engine, the internal gear ratios and the main frame of the chassis, the rest of the bike is actually bespoke. Like for example, a twin exhaust system, titanium walls, forged pistons. You also have a ram air intake system. All of this comes together to make the bike noticeably quicker. If you've ridden the RR310 or even the one make race bike that they have back home in India, this one feels quicker still. And the top speed, well, they just managed to get a 211 kilometers per hour out of this from a 310 single. Though our short 30-minute track session was largely spent learning the lines of the flowing Chang International Circuit, the 310 never felt inadequate or underpowered for what is a fairly quick circuit. I did make a few mistakes with the lines and at speed, and yet the race bike never felt like it would throw me into some expensive mess or put me on TVS's blacklist. It is forgiving in that sense and never feels overwhelming despite that performance. 
and that is down to excellent chassis balance, some conservative tuning on our test bikes and precise tuning of the fully adjustable Olean suspension by the TVS engineers. For my frame size and lack of fitness, I found the ergonomics to be a bit cramped. But then again, TVS was very quick to identify that, quickly make changes to the foot pegs, to the clip-ons, make the geometry more comfortable for me. Now, the racers, of course, get this privilege and they also get to choose between different sprocket sizes. It's a limited choice, but they get to choose that as well. Even the engine RPM can be played around with as per their riding preference, as per the throttle usage. But TVS likes to keep it conservative to make sure that the reliability of the engine is not compromised. In fact, it was made even more conservative for our ride today. And even then, the bike felt quick. It raced to the red line so quickly. And then getting used to that GP pattern took some time. But after that, oh my God, it was lovely. And all those bangs that you hear on the upshift, amazing. It just contributes to that atmosphere. It just contributes to that feeling of being on a race bike, on a race machine. And that's wonderful. You need to experience it to believe it. Despite the conservative tuning, the lighter bunch from the group saw top speeds of over 180 km an hour. The lap times for the ARRC racers on this circuit are in the mid-150s for this season. While the faster bunch is only around 7 to 8 seconds slower than the Moto3 bikes. By making improvements to the internal gear ratios and using lighter carbon wheels for next year, TVS hopes to break the 150 barrier as well. The race bike also rolls on a shorter wheelbase and that's thanks to a shorter swing arm. Remember how we keep saying the RR310 is an excellent sport tourer and out on the track it handles quite well? Well, in this form, it doesn't feel like an in-between. It doesn't feel like it's trying to achieve a best of both the worlds. This one is a proper sharp race bike around the bends. It's sharp, it's nimble, it's blisteringly quick. So quick in fact that my reflexes have been slower and that's on a flowing circuit like the Chang, if you were to bring it to something that has a lot more switchbacks, something like the Kari maybe, the rider is going to have a hard time. That is how quick this machine is and that is how demanding this machine is. The lighter bodywork along with the lighter engine and chassis components contribute to the superb agility of this motorcycle. We have a detailed video explaining every little change that this bike has over the road-going RR310. So don't forget to take a look at that as well. But the bottom line is, for its first year on international racetracks, the RR310 has transformed into a true blue race bike. That feels like a totally different machine than not just the road bike, but also the one-make race bike that competes in India. Kudos to the team of engineers at TVS Racing for making this happen. So what's the point of this story, this review, this first ride? if a chosen few are going to be able to ride this motorcycle. Well, looking at how TVS has done up their motorcycles in the past, looking at so many TVS presentations, if you were to participate in one, you'll often hear the term TVS is an engineering-driven company. Looking at all of that, I think TVS might just use their learnings from this machine, they might just use some hardware from this, from this machine, and that could actually filter down to the RR310 that you and I can buy back home in India. We've already seen the race replica of the smaller RTR series. So I'm guessing a race replica of the RR310 could be on the cards too. That's wishful thinking, but why not? After experiencing this machine, I hope some of it, some of that DNA comes to the India Spread bike as well. Fingers crossed. It's time for us to take our final commercial break, but on the other side, we'll tell you all about the Zontes 350R. Welcome back, you're watching Overdrive. Now, looks and features aside, does the Chinese 350cc motorcycle from Zontes have what it takes to take on the likes of European motorcycle manufacturers? Let's find out. Now, if you weren't already aware, Zontes Motorcycles is a brand that has been brought to India by Adeshwar Auto Ride India. And if you don't know who they are, well, they are the same guys who have brought in Benelli and Kiwi into the country. But like another brand, Moto Morini, this one, Zontes, falls under the Moto Vault umbrella. Now, Zontes currently has five variations of the 350cc motorcycle currently out here in the country. And we've already had a go at the adventure variant of this motorcycle. But here we have the 350R, the street a naked motorcycle and I'm here to tell you what this bike is all about. 
the Zortex 350 R shares most of its underpinnings with the other 350 cc motorcycles from Zortex, including the 350 T ADV, the adventure bike which we recently reviewed. Now, this bike is priced at around three lakh fifteen thousand rupees ex showroom India, and its main competition comes in the form of the KTM 390 Duke and the BMW G310 R. Now, should you consider this Chinese offering over the more established European rivals? Time to find out. Let's start off with the way this bike looks. Now, like the other bikes in the Zontas 350cc range, the 350R looks very radical. There isn't one flat panel across the bike and it looks really sporty with the sharp radiator shrouds, the contoured tank and those deep knee recesses. Its forward lunging stance is accentuated by the mean looking LED brows on its headlamp unit. And the broad tail section has to be one of the biggest we've seen on a motorcycle in this category. And the tail lights and those twin pipes look really neat as well. But there are some odd bits to the bike as well, like the exhaust manifold that sits lower than the bikini fairing. And also those fancy diamond cut 17 inch alloy wheels are a bit of an overkill for me. Now the main USB of these Zontes bikes has to be the electronic features they all comprise. The 350R comes complete with keyless operation, dual channel ABS, a TPMS and you also get a 5 inch full color anti-glare LCD unit with screen mirroring function that is very useful when it comes to navigation. There are also different screen layouts which all, all give off this very arcade video game vibe to it and you even get buttons that release the fuel filler lid and release the seat lock. Features that even more expensive bikes don't get. But then you have to think, are these features really beneficial? Also, some plastic bits on this bike, like the fuel filler lid, felt really flimsy too. The Zontas 350R definitely has looks going in its favour. And as far as its electronics features go, first in its class features and a definite USB of this machine. But for me, man, it has to be this single cylinder 348cc engine. The 350R is powered by the same 348cc liquid cooled single cylinder motor as the other 350cc Zontas bikes. The output too stands at 38 PS and 32.8 Nm of torque, which is about the same as the other bikes as well, as is the 6 speed gearbox, albeit with slightly altered gear ratios. The motor just loves to be revved, and there's plenty of power all across the rev range. Twist of the throttle feel very rewarding, and the exhaust note, which sounds a tad kt mesh to me, is nice. And the bike doesn't feel out of its element above 6000 RPM. You would really have a heap of fun revving this bike all the way to the red line. If you don't feel like riding hard, well, the engine proves quite tractable as well, allowing you to cruise perfectly at low speeds in high gears. The engine encourages you to go fast whenever you can, but the sad part is once you're actually up there at high speed, things do feel a bit unnerving. So I love the performance of this engine. It really just eggs you on to rev hard. It loves to be revved. But once you start to ride aggressively, well, there are certain aspects of this motorcycle that don't come together all that well. And that's more to do with the ride and handling dynamics of it all. The front end of the Zontes gives you a decent amount of feedback, but the weight of the bike overall feels a tad off leaning into a corner especially if you've topped up the 15-litre tank full of gas. You'll have to spend some time to get used to riding the bike before chucking it into a corner and pace. But a nice feature that I noticed was that the mirrors don't vibrate like crazy once you reach higher speeds, and you can clearly see everything behind you. The 43mm upside-down fork is stiffly set up, and it works well to absorb bumps at all speeds, but the preload adjustable monoshock at the rear is set up a bit too soft for my liking. Strangely, with a pillion aboard, the bike can tend to bottom out over speed breakers a bit too easily. The 320mm front disc and the 265mm rotor at the rear perform well, but over loose surfaces, I found the ABS configuration to behave rather inconsistently, which can be quite scary if you're carrying speed and have to brake hard over undulated surfaces. Now you'll have to shell out 3,20,000 rupees to own the Zontes 350R. And should you be willing to part with that kind of money for this machine? According to me, no, not really. And why so? Well, first of all, yes, the Zontes 350R does have a lot going for it in terms of design. Well, the way it looks, spectacular. The electronic suit or the, the features rather, 
first in class features really unmatched out there the engine a real highlight for me personally but then again when you consider factors like the the build quality the plastics that are used into this machine well not on par with a, a machine that cost you around 3 lakh and then when you consider the fact that the BMW G3R and the KTM 390 Duke which are this uh, machine's competition they are more affordable than this machine they excel in parts like the ride and handling and the whole dynamics the riding dynamics of it all so i'm sorry zontes the 350r doesn't really cut it for me before we wrap up it's been 2 years since we've had a chance to celebrate the latest automotive marvels at the auto expo so gear up for one of world's premier auto shows that promises new concepts launches product showcases and new technologies you can book yourself tickets between 13th to 18th january on bookmyshow.com That's it then from us on this week's edition of Overdrive but remember you can stay in touch with the team through Facebook Twitter as well as YouTube and you can follow our latest updates on Instagram and do remember next week we will be back with all the updates from the Auto Expo so stay tuned <laughs>